Number two, dagdagan natin, gawing mas matatag ang provision on initiative and referendum. Ibig sabihin, ordinary laws and even amendments to the Constitution can be started by the people themselves. That is why it's called initiative, or the initiative of the people. For example, you the people can change the Constitution if you can get 15% of the total majority of voters in the country, and this 15% represents at least 12% from every congressional district. Kasi pero mga batas na ayaw ng Kongreso ipasa dahil masama para sa kanila. Halimbawa, the prime example, political dynasty law. Sino namang congressman o senador ang bumoto para sa batas na nifile ko? Na, wow! payagan tumakbo ang asawa, ang kerida, ang anak, ang kapitbaray, ang katulong ng sa politiko. O tingnan nyo, sa darating na halalan, di mga anak sila, ang mga kandidato, mga anak ng mga senador, ng mga congressman. Bakit sila lang bang marunong? Ah, bakit walang taga si Iyo doon? discourages political dynasties as may be provided by law. Eh, walang law. They wa wala tayong batas na mapaira laban sa mga political dynasties. Sa isang pamilya, isa lang talaga yun. O kaya, kung hindi sila malapit sa isa't isa, maski magkamag-anak sila kung hindi masyadong malapit. That's another point sa kayo freedom of information bill. Wala rin pag-asa yan. Pinasana yan sa Senado. Sa House, ayaw nila. Dahil, sinasabi dito sa freedom of information na maski sinong periodista pwede pumunta sa opisina ng gobyerno at maghingi ng mga dokumento para ilathala nila sa buong publiko. Kamukha nito ang aming mga saving sa Senado at yung mga additional na mahuhuwi. O di ilathala sana yan noon pa, natapos na yan. Eh, wala tayong ganun Freedom of Information Act kabuka sa Amerika hanggang ngayon dahil ayaw ng House of Representatives na tago nila sa dilim. Parang mga vampires. Hilig ng magdilim. Kasi kung gabi, nagwawala sila. Nags nagsasabog ng lagin. Pag umaga, pag umaga, bubangon sila sa makabaong nila. Tapos sinatake nila ako. <laughs> Third proposal. Let's regionalize the Senate. Ibig sabihin, uh, black senators, since there are 24, no? let's divide it into three. That should be 24 divided by three. be eight senators from Luzon, eight senators from Visayas, eight senators from Manila, and then they will all meet together here in Manila. Kasi, kung nationwide ang senador, malamang sa popularidad lang ang iniisip ng mga masa para bumoto ng senator. Dahil hindi ka naman kilala eh. Eh kung palagong artista ka, kung palagi ka na sa television, maski hindi, wala kang Competence. If you don't have the competence to become a senator of the land, still you might win simply because you are more popular. Kaya yun ang nangyari sa ating bansa ngayon. Bakit sa isip nyo, ang mga artista, ang mga sports stars, ang tas-tas na kinikita, gusto pa ang maging senator, Abel? Bakit gusto nila maging senator? Eh, popular na sila, kilalang kilala na sila ng madla. Ang taas-taas ng mga sweldo na ngayon by the millions kung binayaran niya ng mga sini nila o teleserye. Bakit gustuhin pa nila maging senator? Hindi ba niyo inisip yan? Oo. Oh. Kaya dapat, para merong equal opportunity for everybody qualified to become a senator, we should regionalize the election of senators so that we don't have to depend, to depend upon mere popularity alone. Dahil kung popularity lang pala ang pagka-senator, eh dapat si Michael Jackson, <laughs> naging senator of the planet Earth. <laughs> Next, proposal. Pwede ba? 
Pigyan naman natin ng academic qualification. qualification ng pagka-presidente, vice-presidente, senador, congressman, cabinet member. Eh, lahat tayo kailangan, how do you say it to Tagalog? We have to burn the midnight oil so that we can finish a bachelor's degree and have some hope of getting a good job after graduation. Isn't that so? That's why you're here. You're trying to carve out a future for yourself by working hard today so that tomorrow you can have some financial security. You can marry a sexy wife and afford her high maintenance. <laughs> or vice versa. But, why do some of these people lead charmed lives? Ano sila? Mga anak na Panginoon? <laughs> na hindi sila nagtrabaho sa eskwela? Wala silang bachelor's degree? Pero nakahalap sila. Ano klase yun? Eh, mga ordinary na low salary na liyado, kailangan pumasa sila ng civil service exam. May bachelor's degree sila. Sinabi ko na, para pagka-police lang, kailangan may bachelor's degree ka. Pero tingnan mo, siguro yung mga police na yun at yung mga kriminal na nagbarilan doon sa Quezon Province, hindi pumunta sa magaling na eskwelahan, kamukha ng CEO o ng UP. Kasi nagbarilan sila, sila sila. Dapat intelligent people should not shoot each other unless there is great cause, like danger to national security. Ewan ko, malaking misteryo yan eh. So let us impose academic qualifications for every major office in our country because you demand it of the poor, the underprivileged, and those who have no access to political power. Bakit payagan natin ang mga gago, ang mga tuso, ang mga magnanakaw, ang mga babahidor, ang mga abusado na nanunungkulan sa napakataas na bang ng ating gobyerno? Samantalang ang mga, the poor people and the underprivileged people are required to go through arduous academic studies before they can even entertain the hope of getting a good job. Tapos, yung pork barrel na yun, talagang kailangan siguro maghanap na tayo ng kapalit doon. Kasi alam naman ninyo, pag binigyan ng pork barrel, ang tao, malamang sa abuso ngayon, dahil akala niya, kanya yun. He is supposed to spend it for development assistance. Halimbawa, ang hilig-hilig nila, waiting shed. Bakit? Because waiting shed, pwede mong gawing doble ang presyo noon. Di ang laki ka agad ng kikitain mo. Bawat senador, bawat congressman, kung wala siyang moral, moral integrity, tatagap yan ng at least 10%. Eh, ang pork barrel ng bawat senador, 200 million. What is 10% of 200 million? In one year. Abel? 20 million. 20 million, kikita ka, wala kang ginawa. At 20 million, yung senador ka, for 6 years. Di 20 times 6, magkano yun? 120. Biro mo yun? Are you hearing me? Can you understand how big 120 million is? That's what a corrupt senator gets without doing a thing. Just because he has pork barrel. Ang congressman naman, pork barrel niya, 70 million. What is 10%? You know, 7 million. Times 3 years na congressman siya, di 21 million. Oh, hindi nyo kikitain yan, mas isusuma kung labi kayo dito. <laughs> Kaya, palitan na natin yung sistema na yan. Ako naman ang pork barrel ko, sa halip yung tagbihan ko, kasi alam mo, kung tagbihan mo yan, savings yan. Oo. Oh. Hindi <laughs> mo kung dalay sa kapwa, sa nagroon mo, kagwas ko. <laughs> Karamihan ng pork barrel ko, pupunta sa aking alma mater, UP, all over the country. Basta sabihin mo, UP, approve. Tsaka PGH, Philippine General Hospital, dahil doon mo pupunta para sa magbang, manubang sakit ang ating taong bayan. So I buy machines. Wala kasi makuha na kickback sa machine dahil in-order pa yan sa abroad, usually sa Germany or sa America. That's why said, most of our legislators do not use their pork barrel to buy machines for hospitals 
which are very, very badly needed by the poor. Palitan na natin yung pork barrel na yan. Number six. Huwag na kaya natin ipapuan sa President ang members of the judiciary. Iyan, minanalang natin sa ating colonial experience. Let's have a truly objective and respected body that will vet or will screen the nominees and will make appointments by itself so that we can politicize on judiciary. Number seven, and most important, I think, for this time, alam mo, sa ating constitution, we have a 60-40% requirement for the development and exploitation of natural resources. Your corporation, if it is engaged in the development or the marketability of natural resources like gold, silver, copper, zinc, may aman tayo dyan eh, sa natural resources. Must be 60% owned by Filipinos and only 40% foreign owned. Sabi ngayon ng iba, dapat palitan natin na yan kasi kulang tayo sa investment para dumating lalo ang mga investors. Kailangan tagalin na natin ang 60-40% requirement para masagana ang ating lipunan dahil mas marami tayong corporation who are exploiting and extracting natural resources. Mayroon may nagsasabing, ayaw, di, ari na lang gayuhan ang ating bansa. Ang pagtatanong ngayon ay, sino ba talaga ang makikinabang sa 60-40% requirement? Ang buong bayang Pilipinas or a certain elite who want to control our natural resources? So you see, these and other issues for charter change are not as simple as they sound. You have to spend a lot of time studying there. Ngayon, my conclusion is this. Nasa atin yun. Kung gusto natin ng corruption, pabayaan lang natin. E di maging corrupt nga tayo. We are called a country with a culture of corruption. No one has ever stood on an international forum to debate this proposal because we are accepted. We know that it is taking place in our country. But we always think that's for another person to do. It's none of my business. I'm very busy with my own personal life. If you think like that, we shall always be governed by the corrupt. So, if, ladies and gentlemen, of Central Escolar, you want me to change this country, or you want the government to change this country, you have no one to ask but yourselves. Look into your heart, and the answer lies there. Tignan mong sarili mo, hawak mo. In your hands lie the future of this country. All you have to do is to tell the truth and to support the truth when you see it and when you recognize it. Ngayon, nilabas na itong iskandalo tungkol sa alleged savings na ginagawa na Christmas present sa mga sendor. Why don't you avail of social media and let your voice be heard? You don't have to corrupt a journalist to defend you or to espouse your cause. Do it yourself. This is a DIY country. Let's do it ourselves. Turn to social media and tweet <laughs> or blog or post on your Facebook or send Instagrams <laughs> and say, we don't think this is right. I may not be a lawyer, but it does not, does not sound right that the money which is so urgently needed by the poor are going to the pockets of people who list the residences as Forbes Park, that's Marina's village, etc. Dapat gawin natin iyon. As for me, I might not be the most intelligent person in this country, but I claim that I'm one of the hardest working people in this country. Plus, I may not be the most saintly of all Filipino citizens, but I do claim that there is an infinite wisdom far above all of us. That infinite wisdom can see everything in our planet. And in that infinite mind, there is a horizon that is fast approaching. That horizon will come, and on that day, infinite wisdom will dictate that the people of the Philippines will prevail over the corrupt politicians and good will triumph over evil. That is my basic belief. And I quote the words of the poet who said, 
who wrote a poem entitled Battle Hymn of the Republic. She said, Mine eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. He's trampling out the vintage where the rape where the grapes of wrath are stored. Where the grapes of wrath are stored. He's unsheathing the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword because God's truth is marching on. Ladies and gentlemen, I appeal to you, make sure by your own heart and your own mind and your own soul that God's truth keeps marching on. Thank you very much.